I, I think most of you have probably seen the spreadsheet. Let's see. Do you remember this guy? So I, uh, I have yet, I've got a GMC one that I have not yet updated. I think there are a good 15 more annual conferences than this at this point. And then the United Methodist Central Conference is one I never did very well. Uh, but the American annual conferences, I did do well. And just uh, the, the part that I sent, spent updating yesterday, I'm not going to publish this later. I don't think it's going to be interesting enough. So the part that uh, I published yes, or that I was adding to yesterday is just the number of churches. I track them from 2019 to 2020, 21, 22. So I had the first three years, 2022 is what I entered in yesterday, and then I changed the formula over here to figure out what the percentage of decline was. So then I did the same thing with attendance. You know, All of this stuff is at umdata.org, which they've updated, and it finally doesn't look embarrassingly bad, um, and shows the incline or decline in attendance, conference-wide attendance, and then conference-wide membership, uh, which is not quite as relevant, but is somewhat relevant. And then the number of churches that disaffiliated, and there are some still disaffiliating this year. So what got me started on this was I was looking at Mississippi yesterday, and I saw that 45 churches have already disaffiliated this year, and then they've initiated one final round of disaffiliation. So we'll update this number later, but then it'll show the percentage of their churches lost. So then there's stuff that I, I have not gotten to update over here with annual expenses and budget and income. And um, I don't know if I'm going to continue to try and do that. The, the finances of every, uh, of every conference are so opaque and the things they measure are not very helpful. So anyway, I figured we'd just kind of go down the line. And what I can do is I can order these things. You know, right now they're just in alphabetical order here, obviously. But um, uh, I can show the number of churches from smallest to largest. So Redbird Missionary in Alaska, Oklahoma Indian Missionary had the least number of churches. You know, the smallest annual conference is 22 churches. The largest out of 54, 50, 53 or 52 actually, because a couple are defunct. 1,100 churches more than in 2019. So um, the biggest number of churches were among Virginia, Indiana, Western North Carolina, West Virginia, Mississippi, West Ohio, Great Plains. All of these were over a thousand churches. Okay, I'm going to undo this. Okay, we're back in original order. And then you can look at the number of churches four years later. This is after COVID. But this is before all the disaffiliations of 2023. So the frustrating thing is we want to see the damage done. And we could calculate some of this. You know, well, that's, that'll be the final thing that we do. Uh, the damage done by disaffiliation season. But even before disaffiliations of 2023, there were huge losses in 2022. So, uh, and I'll, I'll let you see that here in a second. But I'll uh, resort this. Okay, after four years... And then, of course, the bottom ones stay at the bottom. What happened at the top? Are any over a thousand? Couple maintained being over a thousand. Virginia, which had hostile leadership and uh, made churches struggle to disaffiliate, and Indiana stayed over a thousand. But then all those other eight or nine that were above a thousand got knocked down. Uh, how much? Uh, we'll see in just a second. So we have the percentage decline here, and here's the, the where you can see the comparative loss from conference to conference. So some actually reported gains in those four years, which I find very hard to believe. But uh, supposedly Minnesota gained from 330 churches to 344 churches. So that's a four, uh, four and a quarter percent uh, gain. And then Oklahoma Indian Missionary supposedly gained three. That's interesting. But the biggest losses, Northwest Texas, I think. Nope. Alabama, West Florida lost almost 15% of their churches in those four years 
So that was almost certainly from COVID knocking them out. Uh, but you had similar loss in Mississippi, South Georgia. I didn't realize such losses were happening in the South at that time. They, they could disaffiliate at this time. Yeah, in 2022, it did have a first round of disaffiliation for lots of conferences. Uh, but even so, the, the biggest losses for every conference took place in 2023, I'm pretty sure. And so, yeah, the significant losses before 2023. Now, with attendance, you got the number of churches, but if your average uh, attendance is really low, you can have a ton of churches and then um, not many people in the pews on any given Sunday. So the biggest conferences so far as attendance in 2019 would be Florida and North Georgia with over 100,000 people. And then the smallest uh, Central Appalachian Missionary or Redbird, Alaska, Oklahoma Indian Missionary. So this largely tracks with uh, the number of churches, at least at the bottom. At the top, yeah, a lot of these. Oh, Texas. Texas is where they had some of the biggest losses. That one, they had an average attendance of almost 90,000 a week. And that's, that's the cumulative average for all that were in the pews. So uh, looking at four years later, oh my gosh, that's a huge decline. And Florida is now on top. Nobody's seeing anything close to 106,000, 102,000 like we were seeing. So you saw a decline in Florida from 106,000 to 62,000. I'm not sure people are aware of this. Florida took huge hits before disaffiliation. Florida had uh, three rounds of disaffiliation in 2023 where they lost a good number of churches, but they had already lost 41.6% of their weekly attendance across the conference. That's huge. I didn't notice this. All right, so... So yeah, let's look at uh, who had the biggest decline in attendance across those years. Northwest Texas. According to them, in 2022, they were already down to 2,800 from 16,000. So they already weren't a huge conference, but they lost 82, more than 82% of their worshiping body on any given Sunday. Can you imagine? And then Texas is right behind them, and they're a huge conference. They went from almost 90,000 to 30, not even 32,000. North Alabama, wow. All of these, I mean, this is by the end of 2022. This was, there was still a, a full other year. Yeah, let's look and see how many of these had more disaffiliations. Sorry, I know this is kind of dis disorienting. So, okay, so st starting in 2023, all of them still had more disaffiliations. Northwest Texas had 18. Texas had another 24 leave. Oh, but the bulk did leave in 2022. Look at that. Uh, North Alabama lost another 132. So in the end, they lost more than 53% of their churches but let's see, let's go back over here. 40. So, yeah, they lost probably much more than 48%. Yeah, they've got to be a fraction, uh, I don't know, a quarter of their size in 2019 when you look at attendance. If that, wow. All right, let me undo that. Ooh. So, oh, you also have cumulative um, decline. So between 2019 and 2022, the whole denomination lost 3.27% of its churches. Is that right? So in the end, they lost 30, over 30% over of their churches, but that was, a lot of that was to, some of that was to church closures. Um, 25% uh, to uh, disaffiliation. So 2023 was a tsunami. We're still not seeing that. that we're not going to have that information 
until next year's annual conference. And so hopefully at that point I'm still doing this and I can update the spreadsheet and we can really see uh, the wave hit. But the percentage decline, I mean, this is the damning number right here, 39.6%. Um, that That is, uh, okay, so this number, this 3.27% per, uh, number is probably not, well, would that be helpful? So it went from 30,583 churches to 28,379 churches. And so is that number what it should be? I don't have my phone with me. I can, I can do a quick calculation. So what would that be? 28,379 divided by 3583 equals... Okay, so this number, 28,379, is 93% of this number. So it actually declined. Okay, so I think this number averages out all these numbers right here. And so that's not accurate. That's, that's not helpful. What is helpful is to compare this number to this number. And when you do that, that number is uh, over 7%. So the whole denomination lost over 7% of its, okay, I got to remember to, to uh, correct this here in a bit, lost over 7% of its churches um, in those four years. And that was before the bulk of disaffiliations. So it went from 7% to over 25% in one year, losing that many churches. But the devastating thing, the real devastating thing had already happened. They'd lost almost 40% of their worshiping body across the denomination in the U.S. by the end of 2022, if you can imagine. So that number probably goes up to, well, heck, if the majority of disaffiliations happen in 2023. Oh, yeah, man, I should have, like, do I have a total number right here? I do. So total number of churches disaffiliated in 2022 was over 1,500, but then you add... 4,746, yeah, that's that's another 5,500 at least, almost almost 6,000 churches. Um, yeah, you, you're going to see uh, the, the, the implications for worship attendance. Okay, yeah, the total went down from... Uh, 2,365,000 to 1,425,000. Oh my gosh, that's a cumul cumulative for all of United Methodist Churches in America for those four years, and that's a huge reduction. That was 39%. I wonder if that has the same problem where it averages all these rather than deals with that. I'll look at that here in a bit. Um, so yeah, looking at disaffiliations then, so I need to figure out what conferences are still allowing disaffiliations this year so I can update this 2024 number. And so we can eventually see the percentage. So as it is, it shows that 25% of churches, a little bit more than, have disaffiliated. But I didn't include the years 2020, 2021, and disaffiliations because they were minuscule numbers because they weren't even really entertaining disaffiliations at that point. Some... Some conferences did, but those numbers weren't significant, and that really wasn't riding this wave. You know, that was before this huge sea change in the denomination. So um, I'll be really interested to see what these numbers look like next year, because what I suspect is the case. I think they probably lost well over half of the denomination in just a two-year period. And when that's the case, you're crazy to continue going the direction that you're going, um, unless you just don't. I mean hypothetically the lord requires that we're willing to make decisions that are uh, significantly reduce the size of the church you know so um as a uh, uh, an example kevin watson's history that i'm still reading um talks about slavery being just a key moral issue moral issue in the united or in methodism in america in the beginning that they just didn't have the integrity to, to make happen. 
if they had, it would have cost them lots of, lots of churches. But integrity, purity matters more than being a big group. So hypothetically, I mean, this is this is what the leadership decided was. It's it's worth blowing up the whole thing in order to be on the right side of history, in order to to have the right stance on gay stuff. That that's the decision that they made, which I think is unfortunate. I think they're dead wrong about. Not only, I mean, I don't think they were just misguided. I think that they they were the opposite. They they were on the side of evil, and so it's cost them greatly which is really a travesty because the United Methodist Church has still so many resources that could be utilized for good, uh, but it's all been um, acquired for that worldly purpose. So um, it's one thing to know that broadly. It's another thing to see that in the data. And so I'm glad that they still have that data available. I hope the Global Methodist Church publishes data very much like this. I, I hope that we figure out lots of helpful measures to to look at vitality not just on a broader scale but also on a very particular scale like i'm hoping eventually to do comparing and contrasting church growth based on population growth and based on socioeconomic factors and cultural factors um that, so that's a lot of analysis that the united methodist church hypothetically has available but they don't really i remember in the oklahoma annual conference they did not, there was a, a person who post, started posting this comparative information between churches and the conference got mad about it. Uh, the person who put it all together, compiled it, you know, probably spent tons and tons of time. They thought they were doing a favor, but the conference did not want that kind of information being out and available for people. Um, but I'm hoping the GMC actually has an earnest interest in seeing what works, what thrives, and what doesn't. Uh, and then makes that available for all of us to, to, to mess with the data and, and look at uh, this stuff. Because I do think numbers reveal true things. And otherwise, I wouldn't collect, you know, that'd be a huge waste of time here. So uh, 